talked a lot about success. We always hear the politicians say, we'll take better care of our veterans. We hear about the VA and the scandals and the failures there. I'll give you one example and then I'll ask for your reaction. I was reading an article from the Muskegon Chronicle from 1944 about a man whose leg was blown off in Italy. And by some miracle, I looked in the phone book and there's the man's name. I wondered if it was maybe his son or his widow. I called the, the phone up and uh, here he was. This is the man. And I asked him if I could uh, meet with him and uh, get his picture and all of that. I showed up and there's the man with his artificial leg over by the wall. He's in the recliner. And we talked about a lot of things and uh, he told me that uh, artificial legs don't last forever. They need to be occasionally uh, redone and refitted. And he was told by the, uh, the state of Michigan that uh, they had run out of funds. And he's on a waiting list for between one and two years. He's 91 years old. He, and he's living today. This was a couple of years ago. He's still living. What a tragedy. And is this happening all over the place? They say they're going to take better care of the veterans. This, this is a, a mess. So we have a very broken Veterans Affairs healthcare system in the United States. Um, how many people here have been to a VA hospital recently? Was, yeah. Clear, clear that up right away. If it's a VA thing and it has nothing to do with the state of Michigan. Yeah. No, no, no. That's. I think he, he wants to blame the state. That if it's a well, state no. It's 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 at the federal level. It's a VA function. It has the state of Michigan is going to tell anybody. Yeah, it's it's at the federal level. We have a we have a VA healthcare system that uh, really has a lot of challenges in addressing uh, patient care. And what 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 scares me is that the way VA healthcare is run uh, is very similar to the way a universal healthcare would run for all of America. Uh, that's what scares me about a much larger healthcare, something like the Affordable Care Act. Uh, but it is, and we need legislation, and we need people that are going to go in there and actually take the time to uh, improve patient care. And we have doctors working for the VA right now that receive their medical degree in Bangladesh. That uh, right now the VA is looking for as many physicians as they can to fill their ranks, to try and shorten these wait times that these veterans are, are waiting on to get in. Uh, and it's a tragedy. I don't go to VA if I, if I have the chance, and I really pray for a lot of the veterans that have no other choice, that have to go there. He said, they just want me to die. And I said, yes, I know. They want you to die. Yeah. Yeah. The VA is the largest employer of veterans. And believe me, they don't want you to die. We said that the, the state of Michigan running Veterans Affairs Health Care, is that what you're talking about? I or is this? don't remember, but I think it was Medicaid. They ran out of money for this. Oh, so it's outside of Veterans Affairs. This is, this is a state program, Medicaid. Not the VA. Oh. OK. Yeah, state of Michigan. I can't speak to the, 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 the Medicaid programs that the state of Michigan is currently running. So. Yeah, especially if he's a disabled veteran. I was going to the VA uh, out coming in Grand Rapids and Muskegon, and boy, I'll tell you, they have given me the best treatment you can possibly get. Well, they, they, they treat you guys a lot better, the greatest generation. You know, you guys get the red carpet. So, yeah. World War II guys, you know, get the best of everything. Yeah. No, but you know, everybody's care is different. I can tell you this, we have a lot of compassionate people that work at the VA, a lot of veterans. Um, so the problems with VA are at a much higher level. It's with the bureaucracy, and it's with the leadership. I take a blood test, and uh, they tell me that I've got to take x-rays. In fact, I'm set up for an MRI next week. But I took uh, the, 
the blood test uh, and my regular physician here, Muskegon, looked at it. He says, I can't see anything wrong with your blood. Huh. But they got me taking all kinds of tests. Yeah. Yeah. That's challenging. Yes, ma'am. So when are you speaking at Rotary so we get to hear you again? I'm, I am speaking at Rotary in February. However, it's not an hour, uh, thankfully, for a Rotary. I mean, it's, it's a very short 15 minutes, and I'm going to really tightly focus on some veterans' issues. This was more positive, but post-9-11 veterans still face a lot of challenges with employment, and my goal is to address those at Rotary. So are you going out to the... Um the colleges and speaking and um, I'm not currently I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm traveling the country speaking to veterans groups and I'm speaking to fortune 500 employers and telling them why they need to hire post 9-11 veterans that's my goal right now so oh thank you very much thank you I appreciate that Veterans. Oh. oh, are you? Yeah. Well, perfect. I can fix them after you break them, then. Right. So, all right. Yes, sir. Have you talked to these Fortune 500 companies? Yeah. Why don't you take the term post off your language? Post 9 11? Just call them 9 11? No, just veterans. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All veterans. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I don't see uh, I don't see Vietnam veterans have a, a completely different list of challenges. That number 22 veterans a day commit suicide in the United States. That's actually primarily Vietnam veterans. Uh, but nobody tells you that, right? They need care. They need outreach as much as the younger guys. All veterans should be. When you talk to Fortune 500 about employment issues, right? You know, my the reason pre my preference is. You don't just target the post 9-11. There's a reason I'm targeting the post 9-11, and that's because these companies are looking for transitioning at that moment. So uh, Army, Air Force, Navy guys that are in the process of leaving the military at that moment, uh, why should they hire transitioning military, which makes them a post 9-11 veteran? Um, that's the only reason why that's my target, because that's what they're looking for. Yeah. What did I do in the Air Force? I uh, worked on the AWACS. Uh, it's basically a radar jet. Big Boeing 707 with a rotodome spinning on top. Uh, worked on that. It was the technical skills that I learned while in the Air Force that got me a job fixing MRI machines and x-ray machines uh, with that large German medical company. So just a maintainer. I was just a wrench turner. Just turning a wrench. So. so how did that company go out of business? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they, um, how did they go out of business? They just didn't get enough sales for this product. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with the head fixation device that we were talking about. Um, but no children lost their lives after I left. Um, but what a wonderful thing that you created. I mean, that you really got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you said your yes. wife's from, yes. from Michigan, so how did you, you two connect if you were in Texas? So her father worked for a company called GTE back before it was Verizon, and he was stationed all over the country. <coughs> He's not actually from here either. Uh, he was stationed here for a short time. He fell in love with the place and decided that when he finally retired, he was going to retire here. Uh, so when he was stationed down in Texas was when I met his daughter, my future wife. Um, and my mom had kicked me out of the house because I was being bad. And I worked at Pizza Inn as a waiter. And this girl said, well, you can stay overnight at my place. And it was my wife's sister. And she brought me home and staying in this empty apartment. And that's when my wife's sister introduced me to my current wife. So yeah, it's a funny story. I was homeless. I want to say thank you for the bear. 
And also, I want to thank you for your speech tonight. Even though you've got a larger group of older veterans and other folks here, I hope that this has been inspirational to them, too. It's been inspirational to me, because we all have goals, too. And we can have dreams no matter what age we are. I don't care how old you are. Everybody has that dream or that goal or that big idea. There is no age limit. And I'm more than happy to talk to anybody, anytime. And I'm glad you guys came out tonight. Uh, and I'm glad we had all of the military engagement on Facebook Live that we had online. Well, the military certainly gives you an excellent education. Yes. Many. Yeah. yeah. You mean the military yeah. as far as education goes? Yeah. I mean, as far as as your MOS, whatever your MOS is. Well, in the, in the Army. Very well educated. <laughs> in the Army, I was in the infantry, which is just a bullet catcher. Or as the Air Force, as the Air Force would call them, a high velocity projectile interceptor. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun job. And I, I chose the Army infantry because I got brainwashed by Arnold Schwarzenegger movies in the 80s, like Commando. And I said, I want to go do that fun stuff. And then I, I wised up and. Uh, Decided to go to some smart branch. Bought the Air Force was nice if you survived the battle. At least you had a nice warm place to go back. Let me, you know what? Let me tell you this. This is why the Air Force is smarter than the Army. In the Army, the officers would send us out to fight. What? The officers, the commander would send us out to fight in the Army. So it would be like Private O'Donnell, go take that hill, sir. Yes, sir. And I go run up and fight. In the Air Force, only officers can fly the jets. So we would be the ones sending the officers out to fight in the Air Force. Have a nice flight, sir. And send them along their way. That's why the Air Force is smarter, because the enlisted guys got to fix the jets when they came back, but we never actually got in any real danger. So, and they had air-conditioned tents, and the food's better. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Thank you.